Welcome to video 4.1, where we are going to be learning how to create, read, update, and delete data in HBase. So in this video, we're going to do a quick comparison of HBase to a relational database management system. Then we're going to learn how to create tables, how to insert data into those tables, how to read the data back out of those tables, how we can alter tables, and then finally, how we delete data and delete tables after we're done with them. So let's take a quick look at how HBase is similar and different to a relational database management system. Now, like a relational database management system, and unlike many other NoSQL databases, HBase does still have a schema. However, the schema is a little bit more for performance tuning rather than maintaining any strict structure of the data like we do in a relational system. HBase also uses some kind of familiar terms such as tables, rows, and columns. However, they don't really behave the way they do in a relational database management system. So in a relational database management system, at the intersection of these columns and rows are values. And for our row key in HBase, that also is the case, right? The row key is a unique identifier that we can use to access a row. However, unlike a relational database management system, the intersection of our column families and our rows is another set of attributes known as column family qualifiers. And each row might have a completely different set of attributes. Okay, so each row has really a different schema than every other row in the table, which is vastly different than a relational database management system. And we could almost consider a row to be like a little database complete with metadata in and of itself. So let's take a little closer look at what we have here. For row, for example, in row 101, uh, we have a value for nickname for this individual, while in row 102, that attribute nickname doesn't even exist, right? And just this one small example would violate all kinds of principles in a relational database system, but this is exactly what HBase is intended to do. I would also point out to you that we have what we call sparse data here, where we have a lot of rows that don't have values for particular attributes. And that's totally okay in HBase. This would be very problematic for a relational database management system, but HBase is really good at dealing with sparse data. So why don't we go ahead and create this table in HBase and start putting some data in there and run through some examples. In order to create a table in HBase, we just start with the command create, and then the name of the table, a comma, and then a comma separated list of all of our column family names. And the table name and all of the column family names have to be wrapped in these single quotes. So let's go over to our HBase server and take a look at how we do that. Now, I'm logged into an Elastic MapReduce or EMR cluster in Amazon Web Services where I've installed HBase, and there'll be another video describing how to install that, how to connect with an SSH client such as Putty, so be on the lookout for that. But for now, we're just going to launch our HBase shell by typing HBase shell at the command prompt here, and we wait just a moment for the client to start up. You see we get quite a few Java and JRuby messages. You can ignore that, but then eventually we get to this prompt that says HBase main. We type version. We see that we're running HBase version 1.4.13. And uh, yeah, that's great. So we're gonna go ahead and just create our table now. So we create, and then a single quote, customers. And then we have three column families, details, relatives, and accounts. And when we do this, HBase takes just a moment and actually takes quite a long time in computer terms to create this table. It took a little bit over a second and a half. And in a future video, we'll talk a little bit about why uh, these type of operations take a little bit longer, but you'll see that writing data and reading data are going to be extremely fast. So now that we've created our table, we can type the command list and we get a list of 
all of the tables in our database. And a couple of things that I'm going to point out here is we did not specify any of the column family qualifiers, right? So we specified details, relatives, and accounts, but we didn't specify any of the specific attributes like name, nickname, address, email, mobile fax, home, things like that. All of the column family qualifiers are going to be specified as we write data to the table, and every row, as we mentioned, can have a completely different set of column family qualifiers or attributes. Also note that we did not specify the row key. That's something that HBase is going to maintain uh, kind of separately. And also note that there are no data types. We're never going to specify something as being a number or a string or anything like that. HBase just considers all values to be binary blobs. So a number or someone's name or even a picture or a song or a video, anything that we store in this database HBase treats it all the same as just a generic blob of binary data. Also note that everything is case sensitive. And in fact, we could create a completely separate table called customers with a capital C. And HBase is going to consider customers with a capital C to be a totally different object in the database than customers with a lowercase c. Same thing for all of our column family and our column family qualifiers. We do have to be very careful to maintain the case of all of the objects in our database. So I'm actually going to go ahead and drop this customers table with the capital C that I've created. And we'll have more information about this near the end of the video. So we're disabling that database and then dropping it. To insert data into the database, we're going to use the put command. And the general format of the put command is the word put, the name of the table that we're writing our data into, a comma, the value of the row key, a comma, and then the uh, column family and column family qualifier that we want to write a value to, then a comma, and then the value. Now note that the put command can only write one value at a time. So in a future video, we're going to look at how to more programmatically enter data into HBase. But for now, let's go ahead and just put this one value in. So we're going to put customers 101, our column family is details and our qualifier is name. And then the value is Adam. Okay. And note that writing data into our database is significantly faster than making any kind of changes to the tables or the structure of the tables. So we'll talk about that more a little bit later, but for now, let's just take a look at the data that we have entered so far using the scan command. We'll talk about this more in just a couple of slides. So we say scan customers. We see we have one row and in that row, we have just one attribute, and it's the name, attribute, or qualifier, which is part of the details column family, and we have a value of Adam for details name, okay? And again, remember, everything is case sensitive. So if we were to create a column family qualifier called name with a capital N, that is going to be completely different than this column family qualifier name with a lowercase n. So we need to insert quite a bit more data for our upcoming examples. So I'm going to copy and paste this uh, out of my text file here. And it's the same data that you have in the PowerPoint slides. You can see that all goes uh, quite quickly. And again, we can scan customers. And you see we have a lot more values here, but I'll point out that HBase says this is just three rows. Well, it sure looks like a lot more than three rows of data here, but what we're actually seeing is each row on the screen here is representing a value of a column family qualifier. So all of these values here go with row 101. And these values here go with row 102. And note that we have uh, significantly fewer values for 102 than we have for 101. 
because 102, row 102, has a different schema, basically. We have a different set of attributes or a different set of column family qualifiers than row 101 does. Now, we can also add a value for the column family itself absent of any qualifier. So we can do that by just saying put into customers for row 101 and the details column family end with a colon but don't have a column family qualifier after the colon. And now you see we have a value for just the details column family without any qualifier. We can also specify some parameters in our scan function to, uh, to return data in different ways. So uh, for example, we can scan customers and then in curly braces say the columns that we want are details, right? So this is going to return all of the columns that are part of this details column family for all of our uh, rows. Okay, so we get nothing about relatives now and nothing about accounts now. We only get the data found in the details column family. If we wanted to specify multiple attributes we want to return, we have to wrap this in square braces. And so let's get uh, from details column family only the name, but then let's get everything out of our accounts column family. Okay, so this square brace here is saying this is a set of attributes or column families and column family qualifiers that I want to return. So when we do this, okay, we get something that's a little bit more readable here. So for row 101, we have a value for details name of Adam. And then here's everything that's in the accounts column family for Adam. So note that we didn't have to specify that we want to see the savings account, the checking account, and the business account. HBase just automatically returns all of the column family qualifiers or attributes or columns that are part of that column family, right? And for row 102, Bob, Bob has a different set of column family qualifiers in the accounts column family. He only has a checking account and then Christopher only has a savings account. Now, if we want to update values, we use the same put command. So let's imagine that uh, the savings account of Adams that currently has a balance of 25,000, uh, we need to update that balance to be just 20,000. So we say put customers 101, here is our column family and our column family qualifier that we're writing to, and here is the value. So if there was not currently a value for account savings, it would just write this value and create a new column family qualifier. But since this column family qualifier already exists, it's going to update this value. So we run this, and then let's look again uh, at our customers table and get just the details name column family qualifier and all of the columns that are found in the accounts column family. And we see that just as expected, the value of Adam's savings account has been updated to 20,000. Now we had mentioned earlier that HBase works really well with sparse data. And to kind of give a pretty clear example of that, note that many of our customers don't have relatives. Okay, so in HBase, if we were to uh, just return the relatives column family, we'll see that for customers that don't have any relatives, they're simply not returned in the results, right? So we have uh, customer 101, sister and wife, and customer 103's father and mother, but we don't have anything returned for customer 102. Now, in addition to scan, another way we can read data is git. And git is simply a scan that's limited to returning one row. So we could say something like git customers 102, and this is going to return all of the values for all of the column families and column family qualifiers for this uh, customer with a row ID of 102. Okay. We could uh, also specify uh, just the 
column families and column family qualifiers that we're interested in. So we can either do it in this format or we can stick to the similar format that we were using with our scan operator and do something like this. And we need to wrap square braces around this set of attributes, right? And so we get our name and all of our uh, accounts associated with this row 102. Now let's imagine for a moment that uh, Bob here has had a nice, uh, a nice thing happen and has a little bit money, more money to put into his savings account. So we can update that value by saying put customers 102 accounts uh, colon to checking account. And then we're going to put a value of 1000. Okay, so on that if we look at Again, look at uh, look at Bob again. We see that we now have a value of 1,000 for the checking account. Now, one of the things you may notice is that these values all have a timestamp associated with them, and this is uh, called the Unix Epoch timestamp. It's the number of milliseconds that has passed since uh, midnight on January 1st, 1970, which seems like kind of a weird way of keeping track of time. But this is uh, how a lot of computers keep track of time. One thing we had mentioned earlier is that a really nice feature of HBase is that it has built-in versioning and can keep multiple versions of a value automatically. Now, this used to be turned on in the default configuration of HBase, but in more recent versions, you have to enable this. So let's look at how we can alter our table in order to enable this revision history. So we're going to type the command alter and then the name of the table that we are altering, the name of the column family that we're altering, in this case accounts, and we're gonna tell HBase that we want to keep five versions of the values of all of the column family qualifiers in this accounts column family. So when we do that, it's going to take the database offline for a moment. It's going to update the schema, which is going to replicate around to all of the different regions and we'll talk again, we'll talk about this more in a future video, but uh, it's the fact that we have to update the schema in multiple regions is why this takes a little bit longer, in this case, almost two seconds than we might expect. So at this point, Bob has a value of $1,000 in his checking account. Let's uh, imagine for a moment that now Bob suddenly has $50,000 in his checking account, okay? Now, when we go back and look at Bob and his accounts, we see this updated value of 50,000. However, if we query this in a slightly different way and tell HBase that we want to get previous versions of this uh, column family qualifier checking, we see that the value used to be 1,000 and now it's 50,000. And this is the timestamp at which these uh, values were updated. So we kind of have an audit log or a history of what has happened. So let's say now Bob uh, spends some of his $50,000 and he's down to $35,000. We'll update that record. And then if we look again at this value, we, uh, we can see how things have changed over time. So this is a really nice feature of HBase that is not present in most other database management systems and that when you update values, you can automatically have a version and we'd be able to roll back to old versions of values if we needed to. Of course, we can also alter our table to add new column families. So in order to do this, we are going to use the alter command again. We're gonna say we want to alter the table customers and we're going to add a new column family called rewards. And we're going to go ahead and just configure this to keep five versions. So this takes just a moment to alter the schema. And now we can insert data into this new column family. So we say we have, uh, in this case, two types of rewards customers, a super saver and an air miles uh, reward customer. And then this value is 
perhaps the date that these customers enrolled in this uh, program. So now if we, uh, for example, wanted to see just our customers that are enrolled in these rewards programs, we could say something like scan customers and the only column we're interested in is rewards. Okay, and we see we have row 101 and 102 that are enrolled in one of our rewards programs. So the last topic in our video about how to create, read, update, and delete data in HBase is deleting data. So if we want to delete the value of a single column family qualifier or a single attribute, we just say delete, then the name of the table, in this case customers, our row key, in this case 101, and then the column family and column family qualifier that we want to delete the value of. In this case, let's say customer 101 is getting rid of their business account. Okay, so first let's just take a look at what's going on with customer 101. We see that uh, they have a business account, a checking account, and a savings account. So if we want to get rid of that business account, just say delete customers 101 accounts colon business. And now when we look at customer 101 again, we see there's no more business account there. Okay, so we've deleted that column family qualifier. Now let's say that customer 101 got rid of their business account and now they've decided they just want to stop being our customer altogether. Well, we can use the delete all command. So we're going to delete all from customers where row is 101. And when we do that, we see now we have no customer 101 at all. Okay. And uh, if we decide now that we're ready to just get rid of everything, shut down our database altogether, we can drop the table, okay? And so before we drop, we actually have to disable the table first. So we're gonna say disable customers, and that's going to take the table offline. And then we can say drop customers. And now that table and all that data is gone forever. So that's it for our basic exploration of how to create, read, update, and delete data in HBase. In the next video, we're going to be talking about improving our read queries by using scan filtering. And then in the next series of videos, we'll talk a little bit more about how to programmatically interact with HBase to make all this go a little bit more smoothly. So stay tuned and I'll see you there.